Um, in that case, I'll press records um, on the next few from the start because it's just been amazing watching your amazing watching you just the last 20 minutes or so. Um, so if you want to focus on the topic of money, yeah. what would be the most uh, helpful and valuable thing that you can get out of today's session? A path to money, <laughs> like a, a concrete objective path to it, like, okay, so in, now instead of doing this, I'm, I, I'll try to do more that, or, or instead of uh, always, when I choose a company that I want to work for or with, um, I never think, am I going to be well paid? It's completely irrelevant to me. I think, what am I going to learn? With whom am I going to work? What, but, but. So I have to shift that, which has been a program uh, for many years. Um, and it's been a program because I, I love knowledge. It's something very, very important and very exciting for me, but also because of my insecurities. I never feel I am ready. I think I will be better the next time. I will be probably better if I learn this. And, and the cost of this learning sometimes is to make a sacrifice for money. So, um, so yeah, I think I... I need to have, uh, I need to shift, I need to change that, I need, maybe I need to think, <laughs> I need to think, what can I bring to a company or how, or, yeah, what is, what would be valuable for this company is so they could consider to pay me a big quantity of money because I can bring them something that no one else can bring or something like this. I have to build this thing in my mind like my uniqueness and whether, how can I leverage on my uniqueness and get, get retributed for that. Yeah. I think I need to, to, to build that. So I'm hearing, hello kitty cat. So I'm, I'm hearing that um, you need to shift some programs that are within you whereby <laughs> uh, money has always been the sacrifice because there's always been things that you can learn and education and you, you've never really thought about your own worth or prioritized it. And, mm -hmm. um, and that you need to start looking now to what your uniqueness is and your strengths are so that you could go in and ask for a lot of money without <laughs> having to sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so there are two different things that we, we, you just covered off there. One is the shifting of the programs. Yeah. And then the other one is your USPs. Where, where would be a good place to start? Where would you like to start? Uh, maybe we can start from USPs so that we can work on shifting the program because that's probably linked. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. If we do my USPs, we need also maybe to do my areas of opportunities. Well, anyway, okay. Well. Can, can I just ask you yeah? to allow yourself to enter, and I love this expression, enter the brag zone. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, I'm going to enter the brag zone. I want to do that. I never do that. Well, yeah, yeah. Because I'm fabulous. <laughs> I am the queen of the universe. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. In my previous job, I said that, uh, like, okay, in the, I work in the same company, but I, I, I've changed area, right? So, but in the previous area, I was the queen of the universe, and I used to say it, like, to make fun. But when somebody said, oh, could you do that? No, no, I'm not doing that because I'm the queen of the universe. So, yeah, I can write. On a job, you know, on a, a card, business card. <laughs> yeah, queen of the universe. <laughs> I'm the CEO of the universe. I'm the director of the galaxy. <laughs> I love it. You really are. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> I mean, it's all in here, isn't it? You totally are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, brag zone. Yeah, I'll be happy to do it. So tell me about your strengths and tell me about your unusual strengths that most people wouldn't even think to talk about. You mean also personal? Absolutely. Like Personal and professional. Uh, okay, so I think, well, I have, co I have um, a cultural capital that is interesting. Ooh, yeah. That is unique. Um, I can work in five languages, which is 
also unique. So you've got Spanish, English, French, German. Italian. Yeah, and, and Italian. Amazing. Well, I don't have Mandarin, which I should have, or Portuguese, but anyway. But that's all right. Should have. Well, Mandarin would be cool. But anyway, well, whatever. I have this, these languages, right? And I can, I, can, I, can, I can work and write and do all the things I do in these languages, which I've never, and I've never met uh, anyone like me, but I know they exist. But anyway, I don't run into them every day. So this is a practical skill also. Um, You'll run into one tomorrow. There's a guy on the course who's a polyglot as well. Great. <laughs> That's cool. Um, what else? Um, well, I'm a very senior person in, in my own branch. I mean, I've got a lot of experience. I've, um, I've can, worked can you break that down? What does senior yeah. in, in, entail? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a very confirmed and senior market researcher. I'm a researcher. Uh, that's what I am. Um, and then the strategies or whatever it builds on top. But I think my core competence is that. And I think I do it well because, um, because I'm experienced and because I have worked in very different kind of markets, like uh, emerging markets, very developed markets, Europe, Asia, America. So it has given me a different... Uh, kind of experience, which is also relatively unique because this work of um, market research is very connected to a culture. And so normally people, they operate within their own culture, right? They become specialists of their country and they are able to talk about their consumers. And so that's not very <clears throat> banal to have worked in different markets. Like one thing is that in, there are a lot of international researchers, but what they do is that they, they coordinate international projects, which is different from living in different markets. Well, anyway, so I think this is, um, this is a strength. Uh, I think, um, I think I'm, uh, I'm good at, um, I believe I'm good at understanding people. Yeah, that, that's, that's one strength of my job. I mean, I can, I can understand what is the tension of the person. So, and to put that uh, understanding to the service of brands that will create products to solve these tensions. But I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at understanding that. <clears throat> what else? Um, I'm a very good presenter. <laughs> um, so I'm a good presenter. Um, what else? I think now I have really improved my, my strategic thinking also in the last years. Um, so I mean my strategic thinking in terms of work. So because I think before I already had um, a, a clue, a vague clue about strategy, <laughs> but, but professionally it has increased. Um, what else? I think, um, Yeah, I, I think um, yeah, that's what I see. What about your personal attributes? Things like sense of humor or capacity to love or anything else oh. that you wouldn't normally think about applying to work? I don't know. Um... Yeah, I have this, this uh, dilemma. Um... I can connect very well with some people and then, and then I, can, I can be myself and then I can express these things uh, and I can uh, make fun with them and I, I can uh, sort of operate my own sense of humor and I can, yeah, there is something very empathetic that I have with some people. So, <clears throat> so we create an extraordinary relations and, and that's very good and in that sense I've commercially function very well, but it, it works by affinity. Like it can also not work at all. So, but yeah, when, when I can be myself and when, when I can activate my personal uh, attributes, it's of course, it's very gratifying and it has, um, it has created very um, long lasting and interesting professional relations. 
but it's not with everybody. I mean, if um, no, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and it's the contrary. It can go wrong. It can create a lot of tensions, and um, I don't feel at ease with these people. I don't can express my skills or my my these attributes, and I can't connect with what they are, and this is um, it doesn't function. Uh, I'm, I'm in the in the area where I where I am working now. It's been very interesting because everybody is extremely gifted, so and very good. See, so it has never happened to to me in my life to have such a concentration of extremely good, gifted and talented and and competent people all. And uh, because normally it's more you know. I've not average, but there are good people, they are gifted, and they're not, and they are, so it's, it's sort of uh, more relative, right? Uh, but in that sense, it's, um, so it, it has also been very stressful. <laughs> and I can see that other people really have that, that adaptation gift, and they can flow very well with whoever, and I, I cannot do that. Um, but I think when people uh, like me, what do they like about me? I don't know. Yeah, my empathy, my sense of humor, probably, and my singularity. Yeah, definitely. I'm different, different, like something uh, unexpected, right? It's not. Yeah, I think they like that. Or they hate it, but it, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just thinking. Uh, if I'm really a useful person, because my job is to help people, to help people to understand, to get clarity, to take better decisions, to I should be able to reassure them. I don't think I do. I'm very good at that. I'm, I'm good at seducing. I think it's okay. They love listening to me talking, la la la. But I'm not super super good. I think at um, mm, yeah, at reassuring them. Um, I don't know. I, I've never asked myself, why do people like to work with me? I mean, why, why, when my clients come back to me, what is it for? What is it exactly for? Uh, except because of the hard skills, right? That I do well what they, they want me to do. Um, but what else? I don't know. You used the word uniqueness earlier, and then you just used the word singularity. And to me, there's a connection between those two. Would you be willing to look into your singularity and look at how that is a strength for you? Yeah, I, I don't like to talk about it because I think it's so presumptuous, but... We're in a brag zone now, so presume. Okay, I'm in the brag zone. Presume. <laughs> Okay, but it sounds horrible. I, I no, to... please. This is a judgment-free zone. Um, but I've heard all my life. Oh, she's very special. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not not good all the time, but but the adjective special is um yeah, is something that comes back up very often, or recurrently, recurrently. Uh, no matter where in my personal life or my professional life. Uh, so what is it that is special? Um, yeah, I think, hmm. It's probably, in, I think my curiosity for people is very special. I'm very interested in people. I'm very probably empathetic. I don't know. I'm curious. But if they like to talk to me, it's probably because I show a minimum of empathy. Um, so they interest me, all people, everything, a lot of things. I think this is also singular. My obsession for um, decodifying the world, my, my anxiety of understanding. I think is very, very special. That, that's true, that's true. I mean, I say that because, um, because I hardly ever see it in, in, in other people. Just, I'm obsessed by creating meaning, right? 
yeah. that it makes sense that that there are connections between things that what is behind what why so I, yeah i think this is relatively singular and it's singular that i have made my life uh, around i have organized my life around that my job is about that my writing is about that and any connection i have with any human being has to do with that so yeah that's singular i think Um, um, there was something that I see in people, even if they don't say it, it goes with special maybe, it's just, I'm very, I'm, I, I'm surprising, right? I mean, I, 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 I surprise them. I don't know if it's what I am or what I say or, <clears throat> but sometimes there is this effect of surprise. In what way is that good? What way is that a strength? In what way is that a strength? Yeah. Oh, because I think people adore being surprised. I think everybody is super bored. I mean, I'm, I'm talking professionally, but I think honestly, everybody's, we, everybody's all the same. You know, it's very calibrated, like industries are calibrated, expectations are calibrated, and they are very conventional in a certain kind of way. So, yeah, I mean, my industry is not too rigid or too strict, but still, there are many conventions, there are many codes, and originally it's research, it's not uh, advertising, right? So it's like people who have like studied and they're a bit academic and it's and it's so boring i believe it's super boring <clears throat> so yeah that that's the strength when you can say something completely unexpected i mean <laughs> so let, let's turn that because um, the brain doesn't really recognize the um it's not yeah, negative recognize yeah. it, the, it is so yeah. you know it's it's unexpected it's interesting it's it's what it's refreshing or boundless or give me some words yeah, it's, it's probably refreshing it's it's refreshing. It's it's uh, sometimes it's funny, but it's definitely it's yeah uh, it's refreshing or funny, but also sometimes I think maybe it makes them think of something they hadn't thought about before. Yes, yes, yeah, maybe, probably. Um, I don't know, I'm funny. It's true, I'm funny. May like, I share something with you? <laughs> what, sorry? May I share something with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I could completely get what you're talking about because it's one of the things that I, I love about you. Um, you make me look at the world with different ears. I know I've got them mixed up. But no. because you're so articulate and because you're across, you're across so many different cultures and so many different languages, you're able to pull so many things together and mesh and extrapolate meaning. So there's so many things that you say that just stop me dead in my tracks because it's just a different way of looking at the world. But the words that you use are like poetry. That's why I said you make me look at the world with different ears. Yes. Because just the richness of the vocabulary that you bring and the way that you're able to layer it is just so very powerful. And it, it's like finding poetry in the world uh, in a space that you've always looked at, you know? Finding meaning yes. in your life when it's always been there. You do what I do, right? But through all of your senses and, and you filter it through this amazing, curious mind of yours. And it's just so, uh, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> thank oh, yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very natural to me, so I never realized it. So thank you so much for voicing it. Thank you. It's it's a huge strength. That's cool. I've never really exploited it because it's so natural. So, but thank you very much for making me aware of that. And yeah, that's cool. I think it's it's. I think this is a luck. Would you say it, it's effortless for you, or does it take effort? No, it's completely effortless. I think it's a gift of my parents, because they were extremely uh, original people. 
and the, their obsession in life was to make meaning of things. So to create and produce this meaning. So yeah, that's what I remember of them. I mean, they, they, it really comes from my parents. This is a gift from my parents, yeah. I mean, even if they were incompetent in the traditional sense of parenthood, I guess, they were extraordinary human beings. So, so it, it, they shared with me since I was really a little girl, like not um, very normal things. Like, what are we going to do and where will we go on holidays? But they shared during that, these, the questions they have about the world, the sensibility they have about the people, about uh, human relations, about uh, ideas, about... So, yeah, I think it's really... It comes from my education, so I think I was very lucky and privileged to have that. And, um, and I don't have to think about it. <laughs> and as you look at that unique, original effortless ability to view the world and ask all of those questions with curiosity and extract meanings that really make people think in what way can you offer that effortlessly yes. to the world in a way that will create and draw money effortlessly to you well for example that's a very interesting work that we're doing now um for example, like if you're, my, my actual job title is cultural strategist, which is a much better suited and fitted uh, title compared with a researcher. I, I think it has different layers and, and it's, um, and actually it is what you do when you are a cultural strategist. This is exactly what you do. You understand what are the cultural insights of the group of people you are exploring and you're able to make sense out of it for brands to be creative. So I, I definitely think I, I have the title probably, but I don't feel yet completely uh, into my role or completely confident. Sometimes I thought I should work or create, um, you know, a trans agency. You know, like like um, people who do consulting about what is going to happen tomorrow and why are people doing this and what implication it has in your business. Like, you know, trend, trend setting, trend, a trend setting agency. This, this is another route, right? To do exactly the same. Just like do what I love, to, to observe what is happening and try to uh, make sense out of it and go to brands and say, look, it, this would be relevant for your brand to do this and this and to activate that and to leverage on this. So yeah, that's one route. Um, so to work in trends, to work and to much more sort of probably um, own my own uh, work title, like cultural strategist. I don't think I'm doing this these days because I'm still learning a lot of things in strategy because uh, Rima is so overpowering that there is no project or client that I have on my own. Everything passes through the filter of Rima. So I don't really feel I'm totally free or I'm totally uh, confident enough to, to, to do that. But I think, I think, I mean, there is a match between the attributes I've talked about and the work of cultural strategies. But I, sh I could do it as a freelance, as a consultant, or I could do it um, within a company who really needs, like, for example, in the luxury companies, they need that. Chanel or Hermes or all these people, they really need that. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, I, I heard you, I, and I'm hearing the importance of creating, the creative output. For yeah, you. yeah. And as, um, and as I hear this effortless, you know, at the very beginning, you talked about how can I do less work and how can I bring money to me? So as we look at the different opportunities, freelance, consultant or for an agency, mm. what would allow you to do 20% of the work and get 10 times the money? Well, there are different things. So, um... Well, I think I'm learning a lot with him and this is really good because I mean very concretely, like I, 
I know how to work a sort of um, a report about what people think and say and what it means for the brand. But I had never really written like inspiration reports, right? Or really strategic planning reports. Okay, write a strategic planning for that brand. So, and, and, and it has been a different job for me because you don't have to be uh, relying on what the consumers say, which is my area of competence. You just have to rely on what you think and what you understand of the brand and the business because it has to do also a bit more uh, business focused. And then you use a lot to do strategic planning documents, um, of course, consumer insights, but it's very secondary, right? So it's like I had to learn how to instrumentalize my, my ex job to build up on a different competence. And I've learned a lot with Rema, which has made me suffer a lot. But um, so <laughs> now, but now she's, I've learned that. I, I, I know how to write an inspiration document, a trends document, a strategic planning document. So, but I want to consolidate this a bit. I wouldn't pretend I'm a senior cultural strategist. I'm just a beginning cultural strategist, but I can learn fast because I'm senior. So I can aggregate a lot of things very fast, but still, so I have to, let's say, consolidate this, this competence. I don't know what it really means. Maybe like uh, all the documents, all the, all the strategic plannings that we create now at High Speed Solutions, a lot of people work on it. Like you're not the only owner. And any strategic planning I do, I do with one or two other persons and Hema makes like the, ooh, she brings the magic on it. So I have to be able to do the same, right? To feel really uh, more secure that I can really deliver that. So, so this is one thing I need to consolidate. And then um, I should look for, for a job uh, in the UK, in Germany, in, in, in Spain, like, yeah in more affluent markets um, and, in, and I should also look for a different profile of company. I should, um, yeah, it's true. I should go to, um, I don't know, advertising agencies, trends agencies, but very famous, like not the uh, company of the next uh, corner because they have more money, right? So yeah, I, I should also look for higher. It's like, I need to elevate my profile. I, I don't see myself as a, as a high profile person or as a high flyer. I think I've, I've positioned myself and perceived myself for years as a humble and modest uh, research director. And I, I think I need, I need to do that conversion, right? So also. Can I, play, can I play something back to you here? But of course. As you've described all of this, you've used the word should and need to throughout. Yeah. And a, a lot of it then has, has been about not being enough. So I, I should consolidate my competencies. I should go to an affluent market. I should find, uh, I need to uh, elevate my profile. I should go to agencies that are famous. The thing is with should, yeah. it creates dissonance, right? This is mm. what I want it's and this true. is what I should. And it's tension. Yeah. So yeah. what are these? Because we are focusing on what is effortless for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's truly unique and that you may be taken for granted, but it's, you use that beautiful word, capital, cultural capital and everything that you've said and this original point of view and this way of translating the world into five cultures and beyond, you know, is just something that I'm thinking is, is, effortless and something you can capitalize on right now so what in what way would you um want to go back to a direction but talking about from an effortless place within and using the words i want to instead of i should or i need to yeah I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to have the, I want to thrive in what I do. I want to uh, feel acknowledged for what I am and what I, I can do. I want, um, I want to feel happy in a company. I want just not doing well in a company. I say that because this last thing was a bit uh, conflicted. 
Coffin to this last company, but uh, more than being happy in a company, which would be very nice, I must say. No, but I mean, like having very good relations with colleagues, feel appreciated. I've had that in my life, but not always. Um, but this is important, and um, and I really would like to have much more pleasure than pain when I work. I would love it. I don't know why the pain always dominates and the insecurity and the anxiety. So, uh, yeah, I want to be liberated from that. What would give you more pleasure than pain? Well, what good, it's because everything is so ambivalent. In many in ways, I love what I do. But the, the feeling of insecurity and the obsession of not being good enough, of not being worth it, of even always being like an imposter, I don't know if it exists in English, but you know, you, yeah, you post a syndrome. User painted a place. Like this thing creates a permanent contamination that obviously doesn't allow me to thrive as much as I'm doing. But many times I do have pleasure in what I do. But um, yeah, it's always this negative voice inside. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That, that uh, cuts me for my own, um, yeah, uh, satisfaction or pleasure, so, yeah. So I'm hearing that in order to increase more pleasure in your work, mm -hmm. it's about liberating your mind from the, the negative narrative. Yeah, completely. And I think the negative narrative is just connected to this very simple and basic feeling of fear. It's a fear of rejection it's a fear of humiliation it's a fear of not delivering enough it's the fear of judgment it's fear yeah i should uh, probably I'm, I'm wondering if that connects to what you said earlier about not being very good at reassuring yeah of course if i'm scared myself all the time uh, uh, it's very difficult it's yeah definitely that's a very good point of course how could i reassure anybody if i'm terrorized myself it's true it's definitely true yeah, so yeah. how can you reassure yourself yeah. now knowing from your unique amazing point of view and this wisdom that you've been tapping into you know and you've been sitting with for the last few weeks how can you reassure yourself right now The only thing that comes to my mind and my, my, or my immediate uh, spontaneous reaction to that is, I think I, I should care less about this, right? I mean, it's just, I've given so much importance to that terror in my life. It has dominated me and, and yeah, and everything I've done. And I, I, I think it would be wonderful if I really could think just, just be yourself. Just what? Just if you fail, you fail. If you are not liked, you're not liked. If you, if you have to restart somewhere else, you, you can do it. You've done it. I, I think I, I should probably think like this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what? What? So what? Okay, maybe it goes horribly wrong, but so many things have gone terribly wrong in my life. <laughs> What, uh, that's not a tragedy. Maybe I, I should start thinking like this. It doesn't matter if people don't like me. It doesn't matter if I'm not as good as I thought. It doesn't matter. Because? Maybe because um, it doesn't matter because I know I can, I can um, recover from it. It doesn't matter because there are much more important things. It doesn't matter because I've learned that sometimes if things don't work out, it's not a question of competence. It's not a question of talent. It's not, it's not, it's just, you're not in the right place simply. I mean, it's just like, there are places where you can't express your gifts or where you can't be yourself and that's all. Like it's not always your responsibility. So it doesn't matter because of that, because maybe if something is a screw up, well, maybe it's not only because I'm so much of a piece of shit, but it's just maybe, maybe it is, but maybe not. And maybe it's also because it doesn't just doesn't work. The energy doesn't flow and the place is not the right one. 
And it doesn't matter uh, because um, life is very short <laughs> and it's very stupid to be permanent <laughs> contaminated by, by all this fucking pollution, right? So maybe it's possible that it doesn't matter or that it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, yeah. I've never done that in my whole life. So as some homework, I would like you to start thinking that. <laughs> Okay. And can I add a couple of extra ones in there? Yes. It doesn't yes. matter because this is the experiences that make life unique to me and where I learn and grow. It doesn't yeah. matter because I'm brave enough to get out there. Yeah. And live consciously. Yeah. Life's rich tapestry, right? It doesn't matter because every single time I fall, I'm there to pick myself up stronger. It doesn't matter because I can then empathize with people so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter because I'm still here standing. Ooh, you know? Yeah, yeah, Lock, yeah of course. Knock me down. What's the worst that could happen? Well, amazing things can happen. <laughs> we just wouldn't have thought it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I've never thought that I could think that and I've never thought I could have the courage to think like this. Because it, it requires for me a bit of, um, a big bit of bravery, right? But it takes so much effort, so much effort to be in that anxious maelstrom. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, but it's, you know, it becomes inertial, right? It's a, it's, it's a pattern and it, and it has its own secondary benefits or it's a zone of comfort anyway. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Woo! And when another thing that I, I noticed, I don't know if I've shared it with you, is really, really useful is when you notice it's happening, is just say, I release, and then say, I release whatever it is. I release any self-doubt. I release any, so you're noticing that it's happening and you're not identifying with it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Happening. I, I release fear of expressing my thoughts for fear that I will offend someone. Yeah. I release giving my opinion for fear of it not being right. I step into my confidence. I step into my own opinion. I step into my gift yeah. of being able to share yeah. Yeah. my unique worldview with the world. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah it's wonderful yeah thank you so going back to your effortless let's let's create let's let's just manifest some money yeah let's manifest the money oh my god that would be great would you Sorry. would you be willing thank to you. do it oh, okay. okay so um there you go <laughs> already there so um yeah take a couple of deep breaths okay and I want you to anchor into that part of yourself, that curiosity and that sense of wonder that you have for the world, that ability that you have to manifest. You manifest meaning all the time. And if you could use that curiosity to create opportunities and you were to point your attention and your energy towards that, you know, great things would happen. Inspiration, ideas, opportunities. When you allow yourself to step into that freedom of your mind and just let your curiosity run wild. Allow your originality to shine through. And as we look inwards, I want you to articulate in your mind what it is that you most look forward to when you manifest money, when you find it just comes into your life abundantly and effortlessly. What is it that you will most enjoy about that?
whenever you're ready, just give me a nod. And in what ways will it change your life? Your day to day? And there is no fear of money or not enough money. But all you choose to focus your time and attention on. Yep. Now ask yourself, what do you need to do internally to get to that place of abundance? What programs, patterns, and behaviors would you need to change? And I want you to create some statements. The first part starts with, I release. And then the second part starts with, op I open myself up to. So for example, I release the fear of judgment of others. And I open to freely express my thoughts with compassion and love. I release the fear. Yes, the fear of being poor, and I open um, to acknowledge prosperity in my life. But okay, but also I release. the conviction that 
I am like my mother. I need, like, I need to live in poverty because my childhood was in poverty because, because everything I knew when I was small was the terror of my own mother to, to miss money, to be poor. And we were poor and I, I was completely, I released the contamination that this, that this fear of poverty and this experience of poverty. Um, um, Can you say after me, I release any programs, patterns or beliefs? Sorry? I, I release any programs, patterns or beliefs. I release, I release any program, patterns or beliefs. Around inevitable poverty. Around inevitable poverty. And I step into... And I step into... Abundance. Abundance. I step into my own value. I step into my own value. From my heart. From my heart. I release any fears. I release any fears. About not having enough. About not having enough. About not being enough. About not being enough. About not deserving enough. About not deserving enough. I open myself into, or I open myself up to. I open myself into. Living a life that is effortless. Living a life that is effortless. Enjoyable. Enjoyable. Where I can be free. Where I can be free. And where money comes easily. And where money comes easily. And, and carry on with whatever it is that you notice about your own programs. I think that's the most important. I release the belief that I need to work out myself to death to deserve a minimum of money. And I open to the possibility of, um, of working feeling entitled to deserve the money that I can make. And as I share the gift my gift with the world. As I share my gifts with the world. I know I create value. I know I create value. And I am happy to receive value in return. And I am happy to receive value in return. Even if it is effortless for me. Even if it's effortless for me. So Ella, I want you to, in your own mind or out loud, state what it is that you want in terms of money. So for example, for me, it's I want to not have to worry about ever going on holiday or going to a nice restaurant. I want to live in a style where I can travel the world at any time, now and beyond my 
you know, retirement. What exactly is it that articulates the money that you want? It could be a number. It can be what it can buy you. Ask for it. I want money to flow and to be abundant enough so I don't have to think about it. That I don't experience um, petty daily restrictions. But I can also experience currently the freedom of moving around the world, but not so much for, for tourism or just moving around the world because I, I need it. Um, to feel happy. So I want to have access to that. I want, yes, but of course, I want this permanent, this permanent anxiety to, um, to go away. I want, um, I want abundance also because I think I could do more things, share more things with people. And I see my friends who live abroad more often and be more in touch with the people I care for. I want money because I, I can I can have free time for writing to do what is important for me. I want money because I can I can give back to all the people who have helped me so much in my life and towards whom I think I have sort of debts because they've been so caring and so helpful and so generous with me at some times in my life. And there was a series of people that I would like to spoil in return. Like I would like to, yeah, to, to be generous with them as they have been with me. So I would like money to do that. And there are many presents that I have in mind for people that I can't give them because I don't have the means to do that. And I would like for me to keep on learning, to learn more things, to take all the classes that I want to take. I would love to do a lot, to learn so many things too. And then, yeah, and some courses are expensive. I would like to have more money because I would, um, I could become more active in, like, in animals' clothes, clothes. I, I would like to take care of, to be much more participative, to contribute much more for animal welfare. This is important for me. Yeah, and I want to have money because I want to live the, the nice life that I like. Yeah, of course. I, I love good wines and good food. And you can come to Singapore and visit us. Yes! <laughs> so then of just course. say, I want all of this and more. I want all of this and more. And I allow it to happen. And I allow it to happen. You're shining. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Radiating. Oh, that would be so wonderful. I think I was transported to that place of abundance. Yeah, that was incredible. So now it's just a case of letting it be, you know? And um, if you're okay to have a bit of homework as observation, it's it's a case of see where you can bring your effortless self into creating. What can you create effortlessly and focus on that? Because you are so good at seeing what other people don't and deriving meaning. And it is completely unique. And how can you apply that to your own opportunities? Mm -hmm. 
in a way that other people will really benefit and be happy to pay you for. Okay, effortless meaning creation and inspiration. Effortless in whatever it means to you. So that money can yeah. make you effortlessly. Yeah. Okay. But I was hearing very much about what money meant to you. It was all about generosity. It was all about self-growth. It was all about experience. It was all about freedom, you know, freedom to travel, freedom from anxiety, freedom, you know, and in what ways can you use that feeling of abundance, you know, that effortlessness as a way forward, as a path forward for your work or to share the gift of your specialness. Okay. That's a wonderful homework. We'll do it. Yeah. So Ella, would um, how are we how are we tracking in terms of you know what you wanted to get out of this session, which was a path, creating a path to money. We've kind of strayed off it a little bit. We don't have the and then I'm going to do this, this, this. But um, yeah, I, I no, I think it was a bit there these days where we, I think, all thought at some point, uh, what am I going to do if I have to completely reinvent myself? Right? If tomorrow my work, my job has no meaning. So um, I think I want to make money with my books. Right? I think it's um, it's a good idea. Also, so I think that's a path. Um, that has to, that's a route. And no, but I've ne I had never thought about it before, right? I mean, it was just like for the privilege or, I don't know, the specialness of being a writer. But now I also think I can think, I can try to sell my books. That's one thing. And um, on the more uh, rational um, um, side of my creative life, um, yeah, I, I, I've, I have been starting to rewrite my resume and blah, 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 but I have to make it much more. Um, I have to finish that. Um, I saw the other day a wonderful um, job um, announcement, job notice uh, in Berlin for a company that I know. Uh, and so I thought it was, it was really cool, but I didn't make it happen. I didn't work on my letter in German because it's a bit complicated. I have to reactivate my German. I have to, so I didn't do it. So, but I think this is the kind of thing I should be doing. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have to, yeah, I have to go back to my personal individual um, writing coaching because I've been very sort of random in that. And it's, maybe I have to change coach as well. I don't know. But anyway, so I have to professionalize it with my writing, let's say. And um, yeah, and, and activate my, um, my migration of company. Yeah, that's the things I can think of so far. Okay. Make it happen, yeah. And, and would it be useful for you to summarize your key takeouts from today? Yes, yeah. I mean, I think the major takeout is this, um, it's like the creation of a new platform in me, which is a platform of, of self-worth, right? So, and uh, self-worth and, and, and USPs, which didn't exist. Like in terms of uniqueness, I, I think a lot of negative things. I am megalomaniac, right? So, I think a lot of me, I'm very good centric, but I think I'm the worst of everything. The worst person, the worst worker. But it's always megalomaniac, right? In a, in a negative way. So this exists very strongly. But anyway, so USBs, positive USBs don't. Uh, and this was very, very interesting. Yeah, it was really revealing actually. Because I had never, and it's interesting because it's not, Maybe like 
part of my Google X, and I think it's very, very common to a lot of people. It's like I have the two sides, right? I mean, I have a complex of inferiority and a complex of superiority, which is the same, the two sides of the same lack of self esteem or unstable self esteem metal. And so it's whether one or the other, it's never balanced, right? It's never balanced and it's probably not, it's also never connected to or laddered up to something else. It's just like, oh, me and my complexes. But today it was very interesting because I could also see that one of the interesting um, um, outcomes of doing this exercise of finding a USP because it's just not like not only gratifying yourself but just connecting that to what you can do for the world or for others or for a reason and and that was really interesting because I, when I suffer deeply in my broken narcissism right because my own image is just destroyed I, I just want this pain to stop and I think I need to get more of something more I don't know, appreciation of the others or more success or more, but it's so sort of very small and, and restricted and confined. It doesn't really grow me or it doesn't really move into something or, and maybe that's also why it doesn't happen, right? Because it's just, it's very self-limitating aspiration. And so it was very interesting to connect like, okay, the USPs that I have to an objective, and to the rest of the world, because then these USPs are not like, you know, they are not connected to um, only to narcissism or to healing your narcissism or to, they, they become active and they become sort of more neutral, right? It is not that extraordinary to be a special person if you don't do anything out of it. I'm not sure I'm being clear, but it's- No, yeah, I, I this is- this is amazing. Just listening to you articulate it and that level of awareness, the two sides, superiority, inferiority, just watching you process and articulate it is, is actually stuff that you probably also take for granted. But most people don't get to see that journey. And that's another gift that you can offer the world because you're able to, to create such clarity and insight through that. And that's probably just completely normal for you. But it's amazing to see it from, from outside and to, to share that journey and that awareness. My God, you're, you're so far ahead of most people. So, yes, why would you But it's you also your, your talent. You're very, very talented. So you, can, you help me a lot. And that was a revelation for me today. Like, okay, fine, you are different, you are special, you are well, whatever. But it's not interesting and it's neutral. It's not even you, it's not even good or bad. It's just, it's there. And that's int very interesting. It becomes, it has a neutral value. Yeah. Way, but it's neutral and it's, it's only interesting if it activates in, you know, the good of something, even if it's the good of money, right? Or, but that was very interesting. Right. You want to make special, special. Yes, absolutely. And dynamic and creative and useful. Yeah. That was and why, why wouldn't you work on that? Why wouldn't you offer that one thing that makes that specialness that you have? Yeah. As a, as a uniqueness. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was, a, that was really a cool session. Thank you so much. It was great. And the other thing is care less. The I don't give a shit. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, Kira. It didn't stick that stick that much to my mind because it's not probably yet ingrained in my. But yeah, that's a complete newness. Oh my god, yeah. There we have to come back. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's also a homework. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. So okay. what? Okay. It doesn't matter. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Carelessness, my god. <gasps> mm. I wouldn't say careless. Careless means, you know, something different, but it's not attaching judgment to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to make a lot of money because I want to pay you a lot of money. Ah. I, no, but it's true. I, I, I forgot to put that in my, I thought about it, but I didn't say it. Um, but yeah, of course, because I think your work is amazing. amazing. Thank you. Well, 
I need to work on my own abundance as well. So who knows? Maybe we just use that money to sort of meet in somewhere in between. I don't know where it is in between. India? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> Italy. No. Italy. Right. <laughs> or France in the Alps in the south. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll do that. Yes. You're a fantastic coach. You're a fantastic coachee. Uh, it's, I acknowledge everything that you've done today. I, and I acknowledge everything that you've done in the last three weeks, you know, and, and you're just allowing yourself to shine just by literally taking the focus a little bit just off that internal narration, just that tiny bit is just creating huge shifts. And it's amazing seeing you, um, and seeing your Thank energy you. today. So I acknowledge everything that you've done. Thank and you. everything Thank you are. Thank you. That's thanks to you. I feel a lot of gratitude to have you as a friend and, and as a coach. And thank you. Me too. I'll see you next week, Ella. I'll see but you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. But I'll see you next week for um, for that session. Thank you so much, or just, I'm so oh, happy. Lovely. Me too. <laughs> me too. I I also I also get so much out of these sessions, Ella. You know, everything that you're sharing and narrating from yourself is also like a gift. It's a gift to me. I learn and grow through you, not just in terms of my coaching experience, but watching and observing and, and hearing. You know, your gift starts with me. Thank you so much. And whenever you can and you have time, yes, please kindly share the, um, the, the audio, the audios, like the uh, recording. Yes. I've, I've now registered with Zoom, so I should get it on a cloud. It should be sent to me via email. No, no, but it's, there is no rush, no hurry. Whenever you, you, you have the time, it's just... Now I have enough material to, um, you know, to work on until next week. It's perfect. Um, all right, lovely. I send you a big, big, big hug and all my love and gratitude. Likewise. Thank you, Ella. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.